So I am Jared Hines. I'm an associate professor of psychology in, shockingly, the, the psychology department. And we are going to talk about Psychology 333, which is the psychology of adulthood and aging. Essentially, the course is a, a really wide-reaching overview of adulthood uh, from, you know, at least in, in this country, like 18 to death. And when I say wide-reaching, I mean we hit basically every aspect of development from uh, gosh, personality to memory to intelligence to uh, socialization, um, relationship formation, and, and, and sort of the, the maintaining of relationships um, across adulthood. And we talk about sort of the basics of, so for example, like what personality is. We talk about that, and then we talk about the developmental component on top of that. So, you know, it's, it's often people's first exposure to that developmental part uh, maybe not to the concepts themselves, but at least to the developmental part. Um, and I think the the biggest um, the biggest point to the class is to not be afraid of of aging. That's the that's something that I think is is at the core of most of what I show the students and most of what I, what we talk about in class. Um, because I don't I don't want them to buy into a lot of the stereotypes that exist and the negative expectations that exist about getting older, because a lot of them aren't true. And even the ones that do have a basis in reality are often greatly exaggerated. So, you know, it's hard for a 20-something year old to figure out or to think about what it's going to feel like to be, you know, 60 or 80 or whatever. But um, I think they can get at least a little taste of what that is, what that experience is um, during the course of the class. And, you know, I focus on late adulthood because that's my, my training area, but we talk about, you know, transitions really throughout adulthood. So some of the struggles that people encounter, how they typically would resolve those struggles, um, things that will allow them to age, um, I usually refer, refer to it as aging more softly or gently, um, you know, uh, physical exertion and so forth, like exercise, um, maintaining positive social connections, um, you know, not just engaging in care of others, but engaging in care of yourself. All of these things we touch on a lot during the course of the semester because I try to get it in their heads that these things actually matter. The lecture is kind of interesting in that um, it's, it seems to be a lot of me talking at the students, um, but that varies from class to class because the dynamic is always a little different. But um, it's unfortunately the case that for Psych 333, um, it's part of the gerontology minor, and students don't even have to have introductory psychology to get into that class. So oftentimes, um, there are several students who have no background or very, very limited background for psychology in general. So I first have to, you know, for every topic that we cover, talk about just the basic nuts and bolts of what this thing is, um, and then talk about the developmental component to make sure that we're all on the same page, to make sure that we're all understanding things. Um, one other major aspect of the, the lecture that I really enjoy, that I really think I get a lot out of, not just the students, is the contribution of just information and, and anecdotes, stories, experiences from the students. Because a lot of them have very direct uh, experience working in like the healthcare field, for example, and might have um, something to add to various topics. Or they might just think of ways in which they've encountered some issue related to aging, like ageism, for example. Um, is something that's relevant, relevant not just for younger, not just for uh, younger people or older people, but really for everybody. Um, and I think that that really adds a lot of of meaningful um, discussion potential to the class. So you know, I, I end up talking at people a lot, but I think that my favorite part of it is when they when they really discuss with each other and when they're sharing something of themselves to provide real world context to the things that we're talking about. Um, because, you know, we can, we can talk about, you know, aging in the abstract and that's, that's worthwhile, but making uh, or, or displaying like concrete evidence or concrete anecdotes associated with these things is more likely to lead to long-term retention of the material and to make it more personal and more meaningful and see that, uh, or allow students to see that it's, it's really relevant to them. It's not just this, you know, like aging is not just this thing that happens to some people. It's something that will happen to me. And because of that, I think it adds weight to the class that might otherwise be there. 
um, and might lead people to, for example, maybe change their behaviors or at least think about the behaviors they engage in that might allow them to age a little bit more softly or more gently. The main thing I hope they take away is, is just not to be afraid of getting older and to have empathy not just for other people but for themselves as well because life is hard. Life is um, complicated and dynamic and um, as a consequence of that everybody's going to encounter various struggles and a large part of, of just living life and, and you know being an adult is figuring out how to manage those struggles in a way that's going to lead to a positive outcome for you and also perhaps not harm other people around you. So in terms of, of sharing things about the course that are, are in addition to what I've already talked about, I think that um, I think that as long as students come into it with an open mind, they will find a lot of meaningful material, a lot of meaningful exposure to ideas in that class. Um, and some of the best feedback that I've ever gotten from students are from those who, you know, come into it because they have to, because it's an elective that they, that they need to take just to fill in, you know, some credits that they need. But then they find something to latch onto that's interesting, that's, that's very relevant, very personal to themselves. And oftentimes that's something that they might see, like, happen to an older relative, let's say. And, you know, we might talk about some negative circumstance that older folks might encounter, and then how to try to lessen the likelihood of that happening to them. And I think that gets back to the, the, the sort of core of the class, which is how can we as individuals age better, uh, age more you know, softly, more gently, and then also in addition to that, how can we as individuals contribute to a society that really allows for people of all ages to be involved and feel like they have a meaningful connection to that society, to other people. Um, it's, it's important, for example, not to you know, exclude people based on their age from various activities. You know, as long as they're physically and mentally capable of doing things, you know, it would be an ideal world in which you know, they would be allowed to do those things or be capable of them. Um, unfortunately, there are many circumstances in which people of an older age find themselves very isolated, very, very alone. And um, I think given some of the things that we talk about in class, people gain a perspective on that and might reconsider how they treat, let's say, older folks or how they might set up their expectations in their mind for like what I'm going to be like when I'm older. Um, and I think that there's a lot of value in, in at least thinking about those things, even if they are kind of abstract now.